Republic Act 3765, otherwise known as the Truth in Lending Act. It is an act to require the disclosure of finance charges in connection with extension of credit. What are the finance charges? It includes interest, fees, service charges, discounts, and such other charges incidental to the extension of credit. The Truth in Lending Act, or Republic Act number 3765, has a very laudable objective to protect the citizens from the lack of awareness of the true cost of credit by assuring a full disclosure of such costs with the view of preventing the uninformed use of the credit. It sought to end the predatory lending characterized by hidden charges, escalating penalties, and vague modes of interest computation. The Cooperative Development Authority has issued Memorandum Circular in the year 2012 for the implementing rules of the Truth in Lending Act. So the CDA Memo 2012-05 has its purpose. Number one, to enhance the loan protection transparency. Number two, to protect the member borrower from the misrepresentation and concealment. Next is to permit the member borrower fully appreciate and evaluate the real cost of their borrowings. Next is to avoid the circumvention of usury law. Basic features of TILA is interest charged on outstanding balance at the start of each interest period, and then disclosure of all charges incident to the loan, and then effective interest rate in all loan doc is documented. What is an effective interest rate? It is a rate that exactly discount future cash flows through the life of the loan to the net amount of the loan proceeds. Methods of computing interest on loans receivable. The amount of interest shall be charged based on the outstanding balance of loan at the beginning of an interest period. To understand fully on how to compute your loans at your local multipurpose cooperative, let's take an example on the computation of short-term loan. And according to Republic Act 3765, uh, there must be a full disclosure of all incidental charges to all loans. So an example of this is we have to state the principal amount the interest per month or the add-on interest, the terms of the loan, the processing fee, the capital build-up, the factor rate for payday, and the effective interest rate per payday. All of this information should be reflected on the loan application of the member. So you will know the true and all cost of all uh, of your loan to the cooperative. Let's compute the net proceeds of your short-term loan. First, we have the principal of 25,000. Items to be deducted is the processing fee of 4%, which is 1,000. Capital build-up of 4%, which is also 1,000. Total deduction of 2,000. So your net cash proceeds would be 23,000 pesos. How to compute your amortization per payday? First, we have to determine the factor rate per payday. The formula is interest multiplied by term plus 1 over term divided by 2. So we have 1.6 add-on interest rate multiplied by 5 months plus 1 over 5 months divided by 2. So the factor rate per payday is 0.108%. The next step is using the factor rate per payday, compute the amortization per payday. So we have the principal times factor rate per payday. So in short term loan, we have 25,000 principal multiplied by the factor rate per payday of 0.108%. So, the amortization per payday is 2,700. Note that the amortization per payday will be the constant amount due every payday throughout the entire term of loan. This consists of principal and interest, which will be computed based on the diminishing balance method. Now, 
let's compute for effective interest rate per payday. Using the Excel formula for rate, we have rate is equal to, open parenthesis, term times 2, comma, negative amortization, comma, principal, close parenthesis. So, we have 5 times 2, comma, negative 2,700, which is the amortization per payday, comma, and then 25,000, which is the principal amount. Our effective interest rate per payday for short-term loan would be 1.42434%. The effective interest rate will be multiplied in the outstanding principal balance to get the interest for the period and then deduct to the amortization per payday to get the amount allocated to the principal payment. Let's now check the, how to compute the interest and the principal based on the amortization per payday. First, on your, on your first due date, we have the outstanding principal balance of 25000 multiplied by the effective interest rate of 1.4243%. Interest for the first due date is 356.08. This will be deducted to your amortization per payday of 2,700. So, the amount allocated to the principal is 2,343.92. And then, after the first due date, we have to identify the balance of your outstanding principal. So, the amount of principal is 25,000 less amount allocated for principal for the first due date of 2,343.92, your balance after first due date is 22,656.08. Let's now compute the interest and the principal for the second due date. Outstanding principal balance of 22,656.08 multiplied by the effective interest rate of 1.4243%. The, the interest for second due date is 322.70. To be deducted to the amortization per payday of 2,700, the amount allocated to the principal is 2,377.30. Use the same procedure every payday to get the amount allocated to the interest and the principal. As you can see in the table, the total principal collected is 25,000 while the total interest is 2,000 which is also equivalent to the amount of interest projected using the add-on interest rate that is principal of 25,000 multiplied by add-on rate of 1.6% times 5 months term of loan. So the total add-on rate is 2,000, which is distributed to the entire term of loan using the effective interest rate in the diminishing balance method as what mandated from the Republic Act 3765 or the Truth in Lending Act.